Hey guys, sorry I haven't been able to read for a few days. We had a leak in my house, so there's been lots of construction workers here, and it's been very noisy and crazy. But I'm here today to read chapter 10, so I'm excited to see what happens. Shh. I put my finger up to my lips and motioned for Toby to stay behind me. We tiptoed along the hedge in front of the big brick house. When we got to the gate, I scanned the street, then whispered to Toby, You be on the lookout. If anybody comes outside or a car comes or anything, you whistle like I showed you this morning, okay? Toby nodded. I peered over the gate. The front door of the house was closed. I glanced toward the driveway. No car. The yard was empty and quiet. Here, Willie, I, cr I called out real soft. Nothing. Maybe he was inside. I wondered if I should go up on the porch. Probably not. If somebody was home, they were liable to see me. Maybe you should whistle, Toby whispered. Okay. I whistled one time and waited. Sure enough, Willie stuck his, head up, stuck his head out of that little doggy door. When he saw me, he dashed out the door and up to the gate. Hey, Willie, I whispered, sticking my hand through the gate to pet him. He stood on his hind legs and put his front paws on the gate. His tail wagged so hard, his whole body wiggled. He licked my hand like it was a T-bone steak. You want to come with us? I said. He cocked his head and peered up at me. And then, I swear, he nodded his head. If he could have talked, I was sure he would have said, Heck yeah, I want to come with you. So quick as I could, I lifted the latch on the gate and opened it just enough to reach my arm in. My heart was pounding so hard, all I could hear was a thump, thump, thump in my ears. I knew I had to keep myself moving or else I was liable to start thinking. And if I started thinking, I was liable to think I shouldn't be doing this. So I turned my mind to off and grabbed Willie's collar. I pulled him through the gate and out onto the sidewalk. He kept wagging his tail and looking at me with his shiny black eyes. I took the string out of my pocket and tied it to his flea collar. Okay, let's go, I said to Toby and took off running. I ran down Whitmore Road, around the corner and into the woods. Willie ran, Willie ran along beside me. Every now and then, he leaped up on me or nipped at my heels like this was the most fun game he'd ever played. Once in a while, he'd let out a little yip. When we were far enough into the woods that I was sure no one could see us from the road, I stopped to catch my breath. I put my hand on my pounding heart and leaned against a tree. Toby ran up and stopped beside me. We did it, he hollered. Shh. I clamped my hand over his mouth. Somebody might hear us. We've got to be really quiet. Willie sat out in front of us with his tongue hanging out, panting. His tail wagged on the ground. Swish, swish, swish. I knelt down and ran my hand along his back. He closed his eyes and leaned against me. It's okay, fella, I said. Don't be scared. Me and Toby are nice. He scratched behind his ears with his hind leg, making the tag on his collar jingle. What do we do now, Toby said. We take him over to that house and tie him up on the porch. What if you don't like it there? He's just going to be there for a little while, I said. As soon as his owner puts up the reward sign, we'll take him back home. Oh. Toby knelt and rubbed the top of Willie's head. What if his owner don't put up a reward sign? I flapped my hand at Toby. Trust me, that lady is going to want him back more than anything. She's probably making a reward sign right now. I made my voice sound calm and sure, but a funny little feeling was tapping at my insides. A feeling like maybe I had done a real bad thing. I took a deep breath, trying to swallow that feeling down and keep it from growing. I unbuckled Willie's green collar and tossed it into the bushes. Tap, tap. There was that feeling again. Tapping at my insides like it was trying to tell me something. What'd you do that for? Toby said. I rolled my eyes. Think about it, Toby. Toby's eyebrows squeezed together and he bit his lip. Because you don't need it anymore, he said. I sighed. No, Dumbo. Because we can't take him back to his owner with his collar on or else she'd wonder how come we didn't call her. Her phone number's right there on the tag. Oh, Toby nodded, but he still looked confused. I swear sometimes he is dumber than dirt. Come on, 
I motioned for Toby to follow me. We made our way through the woods behind the houses on Whitmore Road. I could hear the cars on the highway up ahead, so I was pretty sure we were going in the right direction. Willie trotted along beside me, happy as anything. Every now and then, he stopped to sniff the ground or root through the rotting leaves. Once, he stopped to dig, sending dirt and leaves and twigs flying out behind him and making me and Toby laugh. He sure was a funny dog. When we got to the highway, I stooped down behind the bushes along the edge. I handed the string leash to Toby. Here, I said, hold this while I see if any cars are coming. I checked in both directions. No cars. I went back to where Toby was and sat with his arm, where Toby sat with his arm around Willie. Okay, now listen, I said. We got to run across the highway, then through that vacant lot over there. I'm pretty sure we can cut through those woods to get to that old house, he nodded. I took the string from him and dashed across the highway with Willie leaping along beside me. We kept running until we made it to the edge of the gravel road leading to the old house. The whole time, Willie pranced and yipped and jumped on me. Once in a while, he grabbed the string in his mouth and gave it a tug. When we got to the house, Willie perked his ears up and watched me. We're here, fella. I said, scratching the top of his head. He looked at that run-down, boarded-up house, and then back at me. I had a feeling I knew what he was thinking. It's okay, Willie, I said. You won't be here long, I promise. He cocked his head in that cute way of his. I don't know how he did it, but that little dog could make you love him by just looking at him. I sat down in the dusty road and put my arm around him. He crawled right into my lap and licked my face. His licks weren't all slobbery like most dogs. It's spooky here, Toby said in that whiny voice of his. I knew if I didn't do something fast, he was liable to turn into his baby self and start crying or something. You hold Willie and I'll make a path to the back porch, I said. I pushed through the sticker bushes, vines, and mashed them down and broke off branches till there was a clear path to the back of the house. It was dark and damp back there. You couldn't even see the sky through the overgrown trees. The tiny porch leaned slightly, like any minute it was going to fall right off the back of the house. The steps leading up to it were loose and rotten. One of them was broken all the way through. The screen door dangled by one hinge. Come on, I called to Toby. He and Willie came around the corner of the house and stopped. No way, Georgina, Toby said. We can't put Willie in there. Listen, Toby, I said, this is the best place. Nobody will see him, and he won't get wet if it rains. And besides, he won't be here long. I watched Toby's face, but he didn't look convinced. And we'll come and stay with him after school and all, I added. Toby had swiped the tears that had started. You're mean, he said. Darn, why do you have to go and say that? I sure didn't want to hear it, because that's exactly how I was feeling. Mean. Toby, listen. I put both hands on his shoulders and looked at him square in the eye. Aren't you tired of living in the car? He hung his head down and nodded a tiny little bit. Don't you want to have a real place to live? With walls and beds and a bathroom and all? He nodded again. Then we need to help Mama get some money, I said. And this is the only thing I can think of. Can you think of another way? I bent down and tried to look at him in the eye again but his head was hanging too low. All I could see was his long, dirty hair, all tangled up and ratty looking. Then we gotta do this, I said. We'll take good care of Willie, and we'll take him right back home just as soon as we can. And then we'll get the reward money and everything will be good. I jiggled Toby's shoulders. Okay, I added. I knew Toby didn't believe me because I wasn't sure I believed myself. That old tapping feeling was getting bigger in my head. I knew I was making a mistake, and I was starting to think how I wished I could go back in time to the hour before, or the day before, or the week before, but I knew I couldn't do that. I was there behind that awful old house with that cute little dog looking at me, and I knew it was up to me to make everything turn out good like I had planned. I took the string leash from Toby and led Willie up the creaky steps to the porch. This isn't so bad, I called out to Toby. The top half of the porch had been screened in once, but now what was left of the old rusty screen hung in tatters. 
Leaves and pine needles had blown in and covered the floor, settling in the corners in damp, moldy piles. I pushed some of the wet leaves aside, trying to make a clean spot. Then I knelt down and took Willie's head in both my hands. Don't be scared, okay? I said. We'll be back real soon and everything will be fine. Then I rubbed my nose back and forth against his, an Eskimo kiss. Willie rested his chin in my hands and gazed up at me like he believed every word I said. What if he gets hungry? Toby called from the bottom of the steps. Hungry? I hadn't even thought about that. I couldn't believe Toby was thinking of something else I had left out of my how to steal a dog notes. I said, what if he gets hungry? Toby called out. I've got that all worked out, I lied. My mind raced, trying to think of how I was going to feed Willie. And what if I couldn't get back here every day? How long could a dog go without food? And water, Toby said. Dogs need water, you know. He might die if he don't have water. Shut up, Toby. That's all I could think of to say, and it did the trick. He shut up, but it didn't help me feel any better. I tied the string to the doorknob and said goodbye to Willie. Then I led the way back through the weeds and briar bushes toward the road. I was glad Toby was quiet as we walked, because I had a lot of thinking to do. About food and water for Willie. About what I'd done. About what to do next. But it was hard to get my thoughts all straightened out with my insides kicking up like they were. That tapping feeling was turning into full-out banging. That was the ch end of chapter 10. That was an exciting chapter. They finally got the dog. So let's see what happens in chapter 11. Thanks for watching.